In this video, I will share with you how I witnessed the slow demise of FastCut's service. What is FastCut and why do we take FastCut? The Philippines is divided into three island groups of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao connected by a nautical highway. The nautical highway is composed of several roll-on, roll-off boats capable of ferrying trucks, buses, and several vehicles all at the same time. This means that you can travel around the Philippines archipelago by taking the bus or by taking your car. A roll-on, roll-off boat will ferry the bus or your car or the truck from Luzon to Visayas to Mindanao. One of the major players providing the inter-island travel service is FastCat. FastCat positions itself as a premium service provider, very safe, very fast, and very convenient. It shows a video on board boasting of the latest state-of-the-art technology fast craft. It has numerous advertising and marketing campaigns positioning itself as a premium service provider. It charged a premium rate but in return it offered premium service. It boasts of being very safe very fast, in fact, twice as fast as its nearest competitor, and very convenient. Because of that, I had high hopes and high expectations for my trips with FastCat. The first few trips were indeed very fast, very convenient, and very safe. As I was very satisfied, I kept patronizing their service. However, all good things come to an end. By 2016, their service had begun to deteriorate. Trip schedules and travel time are very important and crucial when you are planning a trip. You need to plan your schedule so you will be at the port of departure an hour before the boat leaves so that you will not be left behind. The travel time is important because it helps you estimate what time you will arrive at the port of arrival. So if you have plans, schedules, and appointments, you can manage your time. By 2016, Fast Cut started delaying the departure of the vessels. 30 minutes delay became 1 hour delay, became 1 and a half hour delay, and became 2 hours delay in departure. I personally thought that they were deliberately doing this so they could fill up the boats with the late comers. More passengers and more vehicles would translate to more income and more profit. There is an 8-hour gap between the first trip and the next trip. All those arriving beyond the cut-off time will either wait for 8 hours for the next schedule or they can transfer to a competitive service provider. FastCat did not want to lose the sales, so it slided the departure time in order to accommodate all these latecomers. An additional 20 vehicles will easily translate to 50,000 pesos gross sale. An additional 50 passenger would translate to an additional 15,000 gross sales. Not to mention the passengers who will be forced to buy the overpriced food and beverages. So from a sales and marketing strategy, they had hit three birds in one stone by delaying the departure 
by 2 to 3 hours. They had increased the vehicular load, they had increased the passenger load, and they had increased the bar sales. Unfortunately, this came at the expense of the passengers who paid a premium fare because they expected a premium service. Passengers who expected a fast, safe, and convenient trip that will depart on time and will arrive on time as scheduled. And because you're in a hurry to make it to the port one hour before the departure time, you probably missed your breakfast or lunch, and you expect to have breakfast or lunch when you arrive at your destination. Not only does it mess up your itinerary for the day, but it likewise forces you to buy the very expensive snacks and meals that they sell on board. Not long after, the air conditioning had become uncomfortably hot. They started placing portable electric fans to ease up the discomfort. Still not long after, by year 2017, the vessel started to travel at a noticeably reduced speed. The actual travel time became longer by one hour, by one hour and a half, and by two hours, resulting in a delayed departure of two hours plus an extended travel trip of two hours, a total delay of four hours. Again, we paid a premium rate to travel in a fast, safe, and convenient matter. So I asked the crew why we are traveling at a greatly reduced speed. I was informed that the vessel had engine problems and they cannot travel at full speed. This pathetic condition went on for the next year and a half. No repairs to the air condition were made and no repairs to the engine were made. So departure was delayed by two hours, the air conditioner was hot, and the travel time was extended by two hours because they refused to repair the engines. All this time, they continued to charge the passengers a premium rate. It became apparent that the owners were milking the profits generated by the ticket fares at the expense of the comfort, convenience, and safety of the passengers. No longer fast, no longer convenient, no longer safe, no longer reliable, not worth the premium fare. And that is my personal journey and experience regarding the rise and demise of Fast Cat. Thank you for watching! Please hit the like and subscribe button. Please share if you found this informative. Do hit the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget the notification bell for more interesting videos like this one.